What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sonic Attack once again, and I'm happy to bring you the first hash rates for the Ryzen 7 2700. Yes, that's correct. We're not talking about the 2700X today. We're talking about its little brother, still eight cores, still 16 threads, and still pretty damn awesome in some crypto night. There's some weird caveats we're going to talk about. We're going to be look taking a look at Nimic, crypto night heavy, as well as Monero 7 or Crypto Knight V7, however you want to distinguish that new algo there. So stick around. Welcome back. So the test bench is going to be, well, sitting right here. We have the X470 Oris Gaming or Ultra Gaming Edition from Gigabyte. It's the lower end model, so probably about $139 if you want to pick it up. Now, it does support five PCIe lanes, so on this particular board you could not only hash on the CPU itself, but as well as five GPUs, no problem. Inside the BIOS itself, it also does have, of course, cryptocurrency mining friendly options like most Gigabyte motherboards, so the above 4G encoding, so on and so forth. It does also have some M.2 slots, so using those as expanders to get more GPUs on there is an option as well. This is actually turning out to be a pretty nice board for the price. If you're curious on the gaming side of things, it does also have RGB LED, including the white spectrum to get a true white light, which is kind of unique and also for the price point, really good. It also does have a USB-C front header. So if you have a case with a USB-C front header, you can go ahead and use that as well. Of course, we're talking about mining today, so we're gonna leave that for the rest of another review that, you know, if you're interested in, be sure to hit the subscribe button for. Now, the memory is probably not something I'd recommend. However, it is the best Ryzen memory that you can buy that's AMD certified. It's from G-Skill. It's the Flare X 3200 megahertz. We have 16 gigabytes of that, and that does run at CAS latency 14. Super awesome memory as far as all that goes. The drive, the SSD, is going to be the OCZ RD400. And then the GPU on here is a 1080 Ti, but we're not enabling it for any of these tests. So keep that in mind. The first test that we went ahead and run was Crypto Knight Heavy. And this one was actually quite disappointing. So I've noticed this previously and we need to do some more in-depth uh, testing or deep diving on it. But I noticed it on Threadripper where I wasn't getting near as much hash as I was previous or previous to the fork to Crypto Knight Heavy. In particular, the coin I was taking a look at was Sumo Coin. And up on analysis, I figured out that we were pretty much only using four cores. And anytime you added one or more cores to that four core configuration, you would significantly decrease the hash per core. And if you went all the way up to eight, then it would get super bad and you would actually decrease your hash so much that you would actually be getting less than you would if you were just using four cores. Now that rate is gonna be about 258 hash a second. Not super great here. This is not so much a Ryzen issue, but this is some testing that needs to be done on the new Crypto Knight Heavy. Now, while Sumo Coin swears up and down that this is the way to go and it's gonna prevent them from forking in the future, it significantly decreases that particular algos and any coin that is associated with it ability to be mined by CPUs. Now, Monero 7 didn't have this same problem. Moving on to V7 or Monero 7, we got a much better much more normalized hash rate on the Ryzen 7 2700. We were looking at above 600 hash a second consistently, and that's at stock speeds. All the cores were clocking to about 3.4 gigahertz, so it wasn't even clocking that high. I think with some overclocking, you can get some really impressive numbers off of these little Ryzen chips. Now, the other thing to note here, we were only hitting about 110 watts on that algo, super impressive. Now there's a new one that's out and I haven't done a how to mine it video yet. If you're interested, let me know in the comment section below, but it's called Nimic. And this was something that was requested that we tested. So of course I had to go ahead and give it a shot on the Ryzen 7 2700 here. 
and it actually in the web base was only picking up about 12 to 13 kilo hash a second. If you go up to the top corner of the screen, you can click mine faster and it downloads essentially an application onto your computer that you'll have to get through with some of your antivirus stuff. We'll save that for the how to. Regardless, the hash rate on it once we got that downloaded and running was about 19 kilo hash a second. So definitely can confirm that you need to go ahead and get that upgraded or get that download to your desktop and not actually use the web version of it if you want max performance. And the other thing is, is that's a pretty good hash rate for a CPU. I don't have any other base tests, but from what I was seeing in my chat, of course on Twitch, this appears to be pretty good. As well as, of course, we did get a pretty decent bump over previous gen 1800X, and well, previous gen 1700, and 1700X on Crypto Knight or Monero 7 as well, getting in probably about a 40 to 50 hash raise. Now we did see a bump on, of course, Nimic is what I'm gonna refer to here, for of about five watts over Monero 7. So you're talking about 115 watts, give or take a couple watts, of course. And that's gonna be total system power. So keep in mind, the 1080Ti is not working, right? But it is, plugged in so it's going to have some draw you're going to have some draw from the nvme drive not much at all and you're going to have some drive from the memory and just regular loss it is a gold rated power supply from evga so that pretty much covers all of it there's the most relevant hash rates that i have for the ryzen 7 2700 i hope you guys enjoyed it we're going to be doing some more testing with overclocking and so on and so forth probably some more aimed towards gaming as well as just workload tests and things like Blender, Cinebench, Geekbench, so on and so forth. So if you're interested in seeing that live, you can watch it at twitch.tv slash sonofatech underscore. I'm live every night over there at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, so you can catch all of it there. Now, once it's complete, it'll be uploaded over here, but I realize live streams, unless you're actually there live, are A, not as fun, and B, you can't have as much say in what's going on or what Thing, what things we're testing because I like to get you guys opinions. It's just basically my attempt at having a fully transparent uh, testing process because I figure that way if I screw up you'll catch me and if there's a ter specific new miner or new game out or something that I'm not aware of that you let me know about then we can actually test the things that you want to see tested not the things that the industry just says you're gonna see so that's kind of my theory behind it. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next Tuesday.